Hi guys, it's Tim from LaunchPresso and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a supplemental feed in Google Merchant Center for your Shopify store. But not only that, I'm gonna show you a few quick tips to ensure that your supplemental feed is being prioritized correctly and that you're not overriding any data that's coming from the content API accidentally. So make sure you stick around the end for that tip. And if you need help with your Google Ads for your Shopify store, whether it's your shopping or your Google Merchant Center, please reach out to me in the link in the description or in the first comment below. And with that said, let me take you over to my screen now. Okay, here we are on my screen now. And for today's example, I'm using my test Shopify store, Cheap Camp Net, where I already have this store connected in the back of the Google Merchant Center using the Shopify's Google and YouTube app, where the content API has been directly connected into the store. If you set up your Shopify store so it is connected in the same way, you can find that by coming to the settings and tools and you can see data sources. And down here under primary sources, you can see here's the content API. Now you might be wanting to use a supplemental feed because you want to be doing additional optimizations or you might be wanting to set up labels in order to be able to structure your shopping campaigns or performance max campaigns specifically. That's where we add a supplemental source here. But first, how do we get a supplemental feed? How can we get all the information that we need in order to be able to make those optimizations within our data feed and products accordingly? Glad you asked. So the quickest and simple way of doing that is coming across to the products area here in the Google Merchant Center. Then from here, click the download products button accordingly. And this, as we can see, it's preparing a file and then simply just download that file, which will turn out to be a CSV anywhere in your downloads folder. Now, as this is a CSV, I would highly recommend transferring this CSV file into a Google Sheet because it just works seamlessly with Google products. So come to your downloaded zip file, unpack that. You finally found your TSV file. It's a TSV, not CSV, my correction, my mistake. You can simply just drop that into your drive folder like so. And once that's uploaded, give it a double click and it'll ask you what you'd like to open it with. I recommend opening it with the Google Sheets. So opening up with the Google Sheets like so. And there we have it here. We have your entire product range from your store with each individual field and attribute all across the top in, in every single column, as you can see. And from this point, just give it a name. So you can call it Supplemental Feed. Now from here, come back to your Google Merchant Center and back to Data Sources again. And then come to the Supplemental Sources tab, select Add Supplemental Product Data. Again, you can do it from a file Google Sheet or an API if you're using like a third party tool, but today we're going to be using a Google Sheet. Here you can download a template if you want to start from scratch. But as I demonstrated before, it's easier to download the entire sheet because you can get all the Shopify product IDs, which is very important to be able to align whatever optimizations and changes and attributes that you want to be able to add to your supplemental feed. Instead, we'll select choose an existing spreadsheet to upload your items, and we'll select choose an existing spreadsheet to upload your items. Choose a sheet. And just go about finding the sheet where it's located in your Google Drive. In our case, this one's been shared. So we select insert, click continue. Now it's important to give it a feed name. Usually it will come up default as US based on the country. Save that. Have to select a language. Naturally, we'll select English. And selecting a primary data source is important for us in our situation to select the content API. And then click create data source. So there's been no latest update that has been updated. We can see the data source set up here and we've got the source details right here. And again, about this supplemental data source with all the information and how often this is updated. Now the fastest set of updates is every 24 hours. However, you can always do a manual update here should you have pushed some changes within your supplemental feed and you need these to be updated into the GMC as soon as possible. You can do that here. But also a big tip back in your supplemental feed, it's important to strip out and remove anything from inside the supplemental feed that you're not going to modify besides the Shopify ID. That's at the bare minimum what you need to keep in terms of the columns for a supplemental feed because any changes you make need to be identified with a particular product and that ID. For example, this particular product here, this multifunctional barbecue torch burner, if you go and change the price within the back of your Shopify store, and make it $35 instead of $25, it will not change in the Google Merchant Center. We keep displaying your ads or your free listings as $24.90. So it's important to be deleting any information out. Like I said, that should be automatically pulled through the content API. This is a supplemental feed only, okay? So that's anything to do even with your titles, you would change them here, but if syncing your titles through the content API, it's important then to, to delete these out also. Generally speaking, I'll delete almost everything out of here unless I had like labels or some other customizations that were really important, like descriptions as well. Everything else that I'll strip out of here. So it's very, very important to take that into consideration because I've missed it before in the past. 
learned the hard way. Now, last but not least is the pro tip that I have to ensure that you're pulling from the GMC is taking the information from your supplemental feed first. And as a fallback, it will take from the content API if there is no value present. So what is a value? That's anything here where the cell was filled within any of these columns, for example, description, or let's take our example title. If we remove the value being the title actually from this cell in this column, if there's nothing present, it will take that information from the content API, which is automatically coming from your Shopify store. So how do we double check that? So if we come to the supplemental feed source here, we'll just exit out of this, come back to your primary sources. And for us in our situation for our primary source is the content API. So we select that, come to attribute rules under this tab, scroll right down to the bottom and where it says all other attributes is a default rule that we take from the supplemental source to first. And if that has no value, we're saying that we're taking from supplemental source one because I was doing a bit of testing in between this video. And if it has no value again, we can take from the content API. However, we can do some changes within this rule. So for example, I don't want to take any attribute values from supplemental source one. So I can just delete that completely. You can always move them around up or down if you had a multiple one and then just save that as a draft. Then it want to confirm that if you've made these changes, you can either hit apply or test the rules or you can discard them completely. I'll apply that and they'll come down to the bottom and we can see here that we're only going to be taking from the supplemental source two first. And then if the attribute has no value, as I explained before, we will take from the content API. And that's how you set up a supplemental feed, quick and simple. Then trying to start from scratch from a template and then fill out all the attributes yourself. It's easier to download the whole lot, remove out everything that you don't need and re-upload it back into the Google Merchant Center as a supplemental feed. And that's it for today. And if you need any help with your Google Ads, your Google Merchant Center, or if you would like to get in touch to see how we can help scale your Shopify store using Google Ads, reach out to us in the link in the description or in the first comment pinned down below. Fill out the contact form on my site and I'll be in touch. But other than that, thanks for watching. Bye for now.